Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I've got to apologise to everyone why I'm out of breath because I've just beat this man at ping pong. Uh, I know you've got a big fight tomorrow night, but you've just lost a major, major bout there, haven't you? It was, yeah. It wasn't just, it wasn't just losing a bit. I, I got hammered, <laughs> and then he took it easy on me at last few points. Swi- he switched, uh, switched southpaw on me to try and show off at last, and uh, he still beat me. Uh, but let's not talk about that. You know, no negative vibes now. Let's fo- focus on fight and winning. Yes, yeah. Let's talk about it then. I spoke to you when I was in Miami for Canelo. We done a little Zoom call when that when you, the fight was announced and stuff like that. And it's like yeah. I said to you then that you've had the, a lot of fighters can't get out in lockdown. For you, yeah. you're known amongst the MTK guys as the lockdown Lomachenko. Yeah, uh, you, yeah. You've you've done everything right. You beat John O'Carroll. You went over to Dubai. Beat Kotochkov. Now you've got your opportunity to win that British title against Paul Highland Jr. Yeah. I asked you a couple of weeks ago, well, five, six weeks ago, and I'm going to ask you again. How do you feel? Absolutely brilliant. Mm. Uh, we've med, med weight this morning, uh, refuelled. I've still got energy to play, not very well, but play ping pong. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I, like I'm, I'm like living the dream. You know, every, every British fighter wants to to train and fight for a British title, and, and I'm doing it. So you know, I'm you know you you hear, I heard Callum Smith. Um, he said not long ago that he didn't feel he made them like made the most of being world champion. Uh, like, I'm current WBC international champion, and and I'm thinking, you know, enjoy it, you know, reap the rewards of what that what I've what I've done and what I've achieved last year, and now let's take that energy in this into this camp and just enjoy the training camp. Don't be like, oh God, I just can't wait till fight week. I want to, you know, I want to get in there and get it over and done with, but. No, as you've seen from my promo video, we, we were able to have a laugh and we enjoy it, and it's it's enjoying every day because of, you know, I, I'm in I'm in such a fortunate position, um, you know, MTK fighter at year as well. Let's not forget that. So yeah, every, everything's just falling into place, and I am really just enjoying it and enjoying being here and getting beat at ping pong <laughs> and and just being around it all. And and what is nice is being being the home fighter now and. You know, it's uh, it's nice. Don't mean a lot, but it is you know, it's just a nice, just something nice that uh, you know you, I can I can take and and just something else to enjoy. And you, you mentioned there that it's every fighter's dream to win that British title and, and and whatnot. But did you ever think this opportunity w- would come for you? I mean, you you've lost a few fights against top level fighters. You fought for it before and stuff like that, and English titles and whatnot. But do you, do you, did you ever think this was going to come for you? This opportunity. No, well, I know I know MTK are doing a great job for me um, in the fights. Like winning the, the WBC out last time, it put me in top fifteen with WBC at World. So I didn't know whether my route was going to be defend that belt, then move up the rankings in WBC, and then fall and you know chase up the WBC rankings. But um, then this this opportunity got presented, and it was one I was never going to turn down because I fought twice for a British title at super featherweight. And it didn't go my way, um, so uh, you know this time I know I know I'm taking that belt Friday, so it's an opportunity that I, I just couldn't pass because falling short for it twice, and it just means so much for every British fighter that that belt because it's you know it's a beautiful belt, it's prestigious, and you look back, it's, there's a lot of history around it. Look at the greats that have won it and and how long the belt's been around. So I want my name on that list of. Uh, British champions, uh, absolutely. Do you feel unbeatable at the moment? Obviously, coming off them two big wins against Carol and Kodotchkov. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's been a real good shift in momentum for me. Confidence is high. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, yeah, confidence is high. Uh, momentum's good. Everything's gone well in the gym. I'm enjoying it. So, yeah, I, I think you know whoever are, are going to be in there on uh, tomorrow night, I'll be I'll be winning. Yeah. You mentioned that you didn't know if you were going to go the WBC route. Now, we all know that if you win this British title, you've got to defend it three times to win it outright. Now, we, we all know that that title means a lot to, to British fighters, especially guys like yourself and stuff like that that might not, never thought they would ever reach world level. They always thought, if I get to this British yeah, level, yeah. I'm going to do it. So, it's going to be a tough decision for you. Will you win that title and then go for that world honour or will you stick around and win that title outright? Uh, I don't know. I've, I've not thought on too much, to be honest. Um, you know, just because I've had a few good wins... I don't, I'm not. I've not got a chip on my shoulder, thinking I'm better and underestimating. So, my my attention is fully on Paul Island tomorrow. Just make sure that I, you know, I, I leave no one stone unturned tomorrow. Get that belt. Once I've got that belt around my waist, I can and and we'll see what options open. You know, you never know what 
you know, there might be another opportunity that comes around like this for a higher belt or whatever, or a bigger money fight, you never know. Um, so we'll see. I know, I know I'll, we'll leave it in the hands for MTK. They've looked after and done a good job for me so far. So, you know, I put full trust in them to, to get some opportunities and we'll, we'll just see what those options are. Yeah, I mean, right now, I'll go mail for you tomorrow night. Uh, the lightweight division right now is I said it to Gary Cully who's a lightweight I mean yeah, he, yeah. it's the sexy division yeah. I mean you've got Gary Cully like I've just mentioned yeah, there you've yeah. got yourself Paul Helen Jr do you know what I mean it's, it's in world level I mean Teofimo Lopez you've got Devin Haney who I think you want to call out well your coach does anyway yeah, yeah. you know what I mean you've got Ryan Garcia yeah. Luke Campbell's still there you've got Lomachenko who's still there I mean right now that division is uh, Javonte Davis as well I mean I can list yeah, yeah. all these guys I mean right now yeah. This division is unreal, not domestically and at world level. So how excited are you to be in this division? Oh, it's great, yeah. And to have my name up there um, in WBC top 15, it, it means a hell of a lot to me to, for the, to be put amongst these, these top, top names. Um, there's some great fighters. And, and winning this tomorrow will just you know keep me there and more cement that position that I deserve to be there. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting that, you know, I think the, the most red-hot division at the minute uh, in world boxing as well as domestically is probably the lightweight division what do you know about Paul Highland Jr then I mean he was meant to fight Liam Walsh for this title but then you got that call but have you have you paid attention to Paul Highland Jr obviously being that he is he's been around the circuit he's been he's fought for these titles and stuff like that he's fought good fighters have you kept an eye on him and what do you know about him yeah well I've I've watched him and I, and I feel I know enough about him but I'm, I'm actually quite really friendly with his manager Mark Dunlop uh, being over and stayed at Mark's um, in Belfast when helping James Tennyson out sparring. So, uh, yeah, and, and I think we boxed on the same card back in 2016, uh, Euro Pro Teller boxed one of, another Mark, one of Mark's lads, James Fryers. I retired him, actually. Took his O as well. <laughs> got that in my pocket, yeah? Like, I've got you in my pocket with a ping-pong. <laughs> and now I've been defeated ages ago like that. <laughs> I've took you on. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I feel I've, I have watched, like he's had a couple of fights on Sky as well, so I've watched all of them um, just by off chance that I, I'm a boxing fan and I've, I've watched the cards. So yeah, I've watched him and then obviously getting the fight against him, I've looked looked into him a bit and done a bit more closer looking and looked through his records. So yeah, we've, um, we've, we've left no one turned in, uh, no stone unturned in studying him and and just working him out and Sean and Wayne they've both done their job as coaches to to have a look at him and work out things and and then tomorrow we'll just take it round by round um that's how we like to do it we say see what it comes up with we'll adjust adapt uh and and do what we need to do to get the win I know there's pressure on like fighting for a British title for, for fighters and stuff like that, and especially you, you're coming off a great run and stuff like that but yeah. when you hear it's, it's funny but when you hear guys calling you the lockdown Lomachenko I mean how do you feel about that it's nice it's a nice touch actually you know like all years out this is my 11th year going into it now and and getting comments from you know everybody and how well I've done it it's just it's like, it's like a pat on back uh, I don't let it get to me head too much uh, you know I'm a pretty humble guy down to earth so I don't let it I don't start walking around with a chip on my shoulder like that it's, uh, it's just nice it's like a pat on back for me uh, of like you know you, you, you've done well over the years and now you're reaping the rewards of all the hard work you've put in. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice pat on back. Your coach, Wayne, or one of your coaches, he, he, he mentioned calling out David Haney. Is that, obviously, you're not going to call him out and stuff like that. Yeah. But for you, you keep doing the right things. You keep getting MWs, keep clocking them up. Yeah. Is that a fight you would like in the future? Because we've seen like Luke Keeler fight for a world title against Andrade. Yeah, we've yeah. seen Tennyson fight uh, Tevin Farmer for a world title. So we have seen these guys, fighters like yourself, that are on good runs, get their shot at a world title. Yeah, yeah. So it's not unrealistic to say, Maxie. No. Do you know what I mean? So are you? Yeah. is it a fight that you would hope for in the future if all going well, that you yeah. keep winning? Yeah, most definitely. Like I'm, I'm already in top 15 in the world with WBC. So I do believe, I think you can fight, you can be chosen, you can be selected, Voluntary. can't you? Yeah, as a voluntary. Um, as we've seen with George Cambosos, mm -hmm. he got himself mandatory and look at the purse he's just got from that thriller. So that'd be the dream. Um, get it worked my way up. You know, I'm, I'm a couple of wins away from that that life changing money. I could change my family's life forever and make our lives easier. And and that that is a, that is you know as long as we're winning the belts, that is a goal of mine to to help make our lives easier. And my daughter's two years old and 
give her, I don't, I don't want to spoil her and become a brat, but you know, you can just get her nice things and get myself some nice trainers and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. I want some nice trainers like Andy. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a few fights away. And as we've seen in British history, fighters do win the British title and then you, I think I think it does put you up there in the world because you know for a small country our level of boxing I do believe is right up there uh, in the world of boxing um, and Jason Wellborn as well I think he had two British title wins with Tommy Langford he, he again goes to America and, and fights for a world title so I'm not that far away no I'm not getting too far I know I've got an, an hard an hard night tomorrow but you know it's hard not to think. Um, you know, and you're human, yes, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, human nature, but you know, I'm not that far away. Keep doing everything right that I've been doing, and hopefully, we'll uh, you can interview me in Miami when I'm fighting for a world title. Hey, hey, what, Coogan, you heard that? Maxi gets that fight in Miami, Vegas, or even Dallas, New York. I'm there because I also want the rematch with you over in Miami. It might be different, the altitude levels, it all might be different. The sunshine. So, the sunshine, it might be in my favour, so I might be able to beat you at it. Bring that bell with you though, I want it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But Max, before I let you go, obviously, you're the lockdown king. You've, you, we've talked about that, so you're fighting again with no crowd and stuff like that, but yeah. you are the home fighter. that's going out on IFL TV tomorrow night. What can we expect from you? Just expecting Max Hughes win. Uh, I've trained, I, I live the life trained hard I got the call at four weeks notice but that's not an issue um, I've trained hard since then really stepped it up so just expect to Max Hughes win and, and see me as new British champion tomorrow well that's a perfect way to end this interview Maxie uh, if you ever won that rematch give me a shout but on a serious note good luck tomorrow night you. Uh, you. You, you've done it the hard way so you deserve this shot so good luck tomorrow night and day again thanks for doing this for FOTV. TV cheers Andy thank you Maxie